any news you want to feed. Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the first video documenting my ownership of my 458 Spider. Now this is the first video post collection. If you haven't seen the collection video, then please see below in the comments. Now the first video is coming from the garage. Why? Well, because the weather's not been too great. We're in the UK, so the weather's been flipping awful since collection. I was very lucky on the collection day. I had had a good sunny day, and by the time I actually collected the, the actual 458 and took the car away from the dealership, uh, the weather had really picked up. So we we're very, very fortunate regarding the weather. The car's only going to get driven in a similar manner to the 993S. Therefore, it's going to be a garage queen, only going to be driven in the nice and, and pleasant weather only in sunshine and never in the rain, never in the winter. So that, and that was always the case. It was always gonna be a replacement for the 993 in that manner. Also, in addition to the bad weather, we've also got a situation where the access point to the garage, i.e. the garage door, is very, very tight. And we don't wanna take any risks. We've got a situation now where we have to update the actual garage door. I have to put what's called a sectional garage door in. In effect, the sectional garage door, if we come back to the garage, all this section on an up and over garage door is all dead weight and it restricts access. If you put a sectional garage door, in effect the garage gap, um, wall to wall the gap, then you gain this section in addition to the width. So you gain this section as additional width to the garage so you go from actual wall to wall because the runners for a sectional door actually run on the inside um, and run over the top. So the whole sectional door runs over the top as opposed to hinging on this hinge mechanism which takes all this width and we need that extra width to give us tolerance to be able to get the 458 in and out of the garage easily until we get good weather and until we've got the actual door upgraded to a sectional door so we can get the 458 in and out a lot easier then we will be creating video content on horology and other bits and pieces and general vlogging etc but it won't be too long the car's got the standard 458 Ferrari cover on it nice silky cover and uh, this will be on the car just to prevent any dust from the roof etc now that the roof is clean I cleaned the garage out multiple times and I cleaned it out just before the 458 came into the garage but this cover will prevent bits and pieces coming down from the ceiling and marking the paintwork while this car hasn't got a full PPF wrap on it at the moment in the future it will have a full PPF wrap on it I intend to do that next year then need to make sure that we keep a cover on it and we look after paintwork as much as possible until we get that PPF coverage so we'll leave the 458 there for now um, as you can see it's uh, looking immaculate <laughs> as you expect never been driven it's been well it's been driven 5150 miles now I think it is we did about 40 miles in on the collection day um, and the, the the journey we did on the collection day um, we, we it's like I say we did 40 odd miles in it we took it for a little drive and all that and absolutely phenomenal an absolutely awesome car so you can have great fun times in this going to create some great memories in this car my son and I and we're going to create some fantastic content for you so keep watching for future content to come this video also now is going to cover off horology so I wanted to give you an update on the 458 and we're also going to go into horology so moving into the horology side of things give you a, a quick wristwatch check so today I'm wearing the Rolex Daytona with the black mother of pearl dial we're not going to be talking about that watch today we're going to be talking about the Rolex GMT2 Batman So 
So watches and cars are very closely linked. It's quite common for people who have nice cars to have nice watch collection. And although I'm far from wealthy, I started collecting watches some time ago. My first watch was a Eterna that I inherited from my father, who inherited from his father. And that's one obviously that will never get sold and will always stay in my collection. But ever since um, acquiring that Eterna watch from my father, I've created a little bit of a, a modest watch collection. So today we're going to talk to you about one of the watches from my collection, which is a Rolex GMT2 BLNR Batman. Now the actual proper code for this is 116710BLNR and the BLNR actually stands for Bleu and Noir which is the two colours of the ceramic bezel. Those are obviously French so Bleu, BL and Noir and NR. So a bit of brief history first of all. The first GMT watch was developed in association with Pan Am Airways. International flight was becoming possible um, back in the day. Pan Am Airways had a need to be able to manage two time zones for its pilots. So they asked Rolex if they could develop a watch that would actually facilitate this. And um, Rolex duly obliged with the GMT watch. Now the first GMT watch had a Bakelite bezel and the colors were the Pan Am colours, red and blue, so in theory it was the first Pepsi, although it wasn't obviously known as a Pepsi then I don't believe. Because it was Bakelite, the bezel was very fragile and was prone to cracking, so they redesigned the bezel shortly after it being implemented in Bakelite. Uh, you might see one or two cats walking around by the way, uh, we've got Felix and Cassie joining us as well, so they may be joining us in the background in some of the shots, just in case you're wondering. So. Just to backtrack a bit again, the uh, Pan Am's association with uh, the first GMT was released in 1954 in association with Pan Am Airways. Now, I purchased my BLNR in 2019 and this run was then ended. This was the last run of the Oyster BLNR's Batmans. So I'm just gonna take it out of the box. Now, my BLNR has been kept in this box ever since I procured it. It's brand new, never been worn which may be a bit sad, but this was always perceived to be a watch that I would keep in extremely good condition. Watch out of his collection, he's even got his bezel protector on. And here you can see distinctly the ceramic blue and black coloring of the ceramic bezel. Now Rolex called this ceramic bezel Cerachrome. Rolex had implemented ceramic bezels um, many times before, I believe, for 10 years at the time of the release of this Batman. This blue and black GMT-2, um, again nicknamed the Batman, was released in 2013. And at that time, Rolex had already had um, 10 years experience of creating ceramic bezels. What they didn't have experience was, and what this was the first of, was integrating two colours in the ceramic bezel. And it was very difficult. I believe the way they had to facilitate this, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, was by laying one colour over, first of all, probably the weakest colour, which would have been blue. So they layered the whole colour of blue across the whole ceramic bezel, and then they put black across half of the bezel. And as you can see, they did it very, very accurately. It was, it was a great success. Now this, as I said, this model is a 2019. This is the last of the Oyster bracelet. This is the Oyster bracelet. This is the last of the Oyster bracelet BLNRs. In 2019, this version of the watch was superseded by the Jubilee bracelet version of the watch. Now the Jubilee bracelet version of the watch, in addition to having the Jubilee bracelet, also had a movement update. The movement in this watch is called the 3186. And this movement was updated to the 3285. There was two major changes in the upgraded movement. The first one being the increasing of shock absorbing, so it could take more of a shock to the movement. And the second and key improvement was the improvement of the power reserve from 48 hours to 70 hours. As I say, this is the 2019 BLNR Batman GMT2 and this is very sought after because it's the last year to say this was superseded by the Jubilee version of this watch. The thing about GMT watches is that they manage multiple time zones and they man manage these multiple time zones by having a 24 hour hand that actually points at the actual hour using the 24 hour format in the second time zone. Obviously you have your normal hour hand which points at the current time zone. They call the 24 hour hand the GMT hand and you can adjust the bezel by moving it clockwise or counterclockwise and you can use this to track a third time zone. So you have your normal time zone with your normal hour hand, you have your 24 hour hand that tracks a second time zone and then you can track a third time zone by using the actual ceramic bezel. 
Now one of the benefits of the GMT2 is that not only can you track the multiple time zones, but you can actually change the 24 hour hand very easily with one of the adjustments. One of the stage um, pulls on the actual crown facilitates the ability to actually move the 24 hour hand one hour at a time, thereby you can have your, your, your standard time zone set up and, and uh, not affected by making a change to when you move to a separate time zone by just adjusting the hours by moving the 24 hour hand forwards or backwards in alignment with your new time zone. Now one of the things that isn't very well known is that the first incarnation of the GMT watch, the one that was developed in 1954, what isn't very well known is that the first GMT watch was nicknamed the Pussy Galore because it was used in the film Goldfinger by Honor Blackman and her character in the film was Pussy Galore. So she actually wore the initial GMT watch that was developed in association with Pan Am. I'll just give you a look of what it looks like on the wrist. I'm currently wearing, as I, as I detailed earlier, my Rolex two-tone Daytona with the black mother of pearl dial. So I'll just take this off. This is unworn, so it's still got most of the stickers still on the watch. see that it really catches the eye the ceramic bezel really makes the the watch the blue in the bezel is well known to change colors depending on the light that you're in quite commonly it will change to different variances of blue to purple and also to black when the light isn't so good so hopefully you've enjoyed this review of the gmt2 batman blnr please let me know whether you prefer the earlier version of the batman and in effect this version of the batman or indeed if you prefer the jubilee bracelet version of the batman quite commonly people believe that the pepsi is better placed with the Jubilee bracelet rather than the actual Batman and the Batman should be on the Oyster bracelet because it's believed that the Oyster bracelet is more masculine. Put some comments below and let me know what your thoughts are. A little bit of a change from the normal from the car content but it was always intended to uh, provide reviews on horology items as well so timepieces etc. This watch is unworn and never been used and it is actually up for sale at the moment so if you are interested in purchasing this watch please drop me a comment below and we'll get in touch. Let me know what you think about the review. Please make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications. Select all so you receive notifications of all future incoming videos. Please share the video as well. Very important for the channel to get the subscriber base up which will drive more content and loads more content to come both on horology and other watches in the collection and also of course car content when the weather improves and we get the new garage door fitted. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Take care and see you in the next video.